Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to share with you a brief story of how I learned that for me, creativity and spirituality are inextricably tied. And also share a little bit about the creative transformation I've undergone over the last two years. And of course, share some of the music born out of that transformation. My personal story as a musician started at five years old when my mother, who is here today, who was also a singer and a songwriter, she wrote a song to teach me the days of the week. And the song we call the India song. And it goes like this. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I am one week older, starting new on Monday. When I get home from my school, I will go to play. Starting each and every morning, it's a brand new day. Can we do like that? Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my point is that music for me was the most natural thing in the world because it was, you know, always around because my mother was a singer. And my personal definition of creativity is translating feeling into something tangible. Translating feeling into something tangible. And for me, the process of doing that is a spiritual process. When I write songs, I pray first, I ask for guidance, and then I relax and I literally hear words. It's almost like a whisper is the best way I can describe it. And I just write those words down. Sometimes I'm so eager that I jump in and it isn't really working and I'm reminded to go back into the process and pray first, listen, and then write. And being in that space where I'm connected to my intuition, I call that being in the flow. But what do you create when you're attempting to edit the truth of how you feel as it's coming out? So, Going back a little bit, I played multiple instruments all through junior high and high school, and at 19, I went away to college, and with my first paycheck, I bought myself a guitar, and I wrote my first three songs. I knew I had found my sweet spot, and that was the first time I experienced what I now call being in the flow, hearing that whisper and just following it. So in 1996, I sang those first three songs I'd written at a coffee shop, and I got a standing ovation. So a few months later, I left school where I was studying to be a jewelry maker, a visual artist. I left school to just do what felt right, and I had no expectations. And I followed that intuition all the way up to four years later, after writing my first song, I signed a record deal. That day that I signed the deal, I felt something shift, and it wasn't really for the better, but I ignored that feeling and pushed forward because I was signing up for the dream, which was to be rich and famous and take care of my mom and buy her a house outright. <laughs> so it, during that year, I lost my voice for two years I was recording a, my first album. I lost my voice for a year of that time, and I ignored that sign and kept pushing through. Around this time, as my career was just beginning, I was in deep thought and prayer, and I heard the words, what is the difference between accepting and expecting? And it took me until this year to figure out what that means for me. Accepting is being in the moment, trusting in the process, or being what I call in the flow. Expecting is trying to script the life, trying to push hard and make it happen the way you think you want it to be. For me, expecting is writer's block. Six years after writing my first song, my first album was released and I was on tour with Sade. Seven years after writing my first song, I was nominated for seven Grammys, none of which I won, and I fell completely out of the flow and into that space of expecting. At this point, I had so many expectations. I wanted to win Grammys, I wanted to be on top of the Billboard charts, I wanted to have hit records, I wanted to be the best, I wanted to be just the best. And I kind of got those things. I got hit records and I was top of the Billboard chart, but I couldn't see that I got it because I didn't get it how I wanted it. The space I call being in the flow of feeling intuitively guided by that higher force, I did it with my songwriting most of the time, but not with how I was navigating the big picture of my creativity. What had been the most natural thing since I was five became my least natural thing. People started saying things like, that music is too positive. Or, don't wear that because so-and-so wears that. Or, we don't like your hair. I would play this music at home around my kids, but I wouldn't play it on the radio. Like, stuff like that, I thought was odd. And so, although in the end I would make the choices that were right for me, there were so many other voices drowning out my inner guidance that it became hard for me to hear. 
And what I ended up doing for the better part of my career is attempting to walk the fine line between the most authentic expression and what I thought people wanted. So what do you create when you're attempting to edit the truth of how you feel as you're feeling it? For me, the final product was just a bit distorted. I love every song I've ever released, with the exception of one. I'm not gonna tell you what that is. <laughs> but I always felt like something was missing. And I actually felt like it was all too much. So by 2006, by 2006, the tension between who I was trying to be and who I really am began to tighten. In 2008, I traveled to Israel, where I met a musician named Idan Reichel. I heard his, yes, I, I heard his music. <laughs> I heard Idan's music and I literally said, I wish I could make music like this. And as we walked out of his apartment, I turned to my mother and I said, he is a musical soulmate. In 2009, I released another album, went on another tour, and the tension reached a breaking point and everything just snapped and fell to the ground and just like that, I was free. I woke up and I realized this doesn't feel good and I don't have to do it. And then I realized with all the freedom I had, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had lost touch with my creative self in such a profound way that I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I went into prayer to remember me, remember my authentic creative expression. And that's when I realized without the foundation of spirituality, everything feels shallow, even winning Grammys. But making choices from that space of being in the flow, even small things feel like big wins. And I welcome the lessons of the difficult moments because I know what the bigger picture is. I believe it is truly a spiritual gift to be able to hear spirit and translate emotion into a song. And I learned through this journey that not honoring that gift by editing in the name of success, my whole life felt off balance. So bottom line, without my spiritual foundation, my creativity doesn't really work. I said I would take 2010 off to heal and I was open to everything. Making music wasn't a given, it was an option. I seriously considered going back to school. So three months into that year off, March of 2010, Idan came to visit me in Atlanta and we wrote a song together and he shared some of his English songs with me and everything in me knew that this is what I wanted to do. So the lyrics we've written to, the lyrics I have written to Idan's melodies um, have all been completely created from that space of the flow where I pray first, I listen, and then I write and there's no expecting, just accepting. They've all been very easy to write, no laboring, no editing, no distortion. And the simple truth expressed in these songs has surprised even me. The best part about all of this is that I'm finally saying the things in the songs that I've edited myself from saying so many times in the past. I didn't know, I don't know, I, I don't know what too positive means. <laughs> but in a world in such dire need of healing, my mission is to spread love, healing, peace, and joy through the power of words and music, and I feel renewed in that mission. Um, I'm living a life more in the flow than ever, and because of that, I'm making music that's more in the flow. Now, 15 years after writing my first song, I truly honor where the creativity comes from. The songs we're gonna perform for you today are all composed by Idan Reichel and I, and um, they're from our forthcoming album, Open Door. Open door means letting yourself out into the world, and open door means letting yourself, letting the world in to you. That's being in the flow. So what you see up here in my bass player, who I've known for like 15 years, can attest to this. This is the band I've always wanted, this right here. Um, and the music you're gonna hear today is what Oprah called my new music, Born Out of Freedom. So these are some songs from Open Door. This first song is called Sixth Avenue. Fifth Avenue 
Still my favorite place in the Empire State is in bed with you. A boat on the Hudson to Niagara Falls, from the Statue of Liberty to Carnegie Hall. Still my favorite place in the Empire State Park, the village and the Brooklyn Bridge The hottest shoes in the world The fashion district Still my favorite place In the Empire State Is in bed with you I've been around the world And now I understand There is nothing more than an honest friend There is nothing more powerful Than the warm hands of man I think you understand Oh, I think you understand We can go to Radio City Or to Madison Square Garden Listen to jazz at Lincoln Center. Visit the Apollo up in Harlem. But when it's all done and said, and I lay down my head, I want to be next to you. Because my favorite place in the Empire State is in, thank you, Blue, there. Cause my favorite place in the Empire State is in bed with you. <laughs> Thank you. This next song is called The Wind. Um, Idan wrote this, it's in Hebrew. It's called Haua Hazo. And it's just saying, um, long after we're gone, all the beautiful things of nature will remain. So live now and enjoy now. It's the best translation I can come up with. This is Haua Hazo. Hauach Hazel. Hauach Hazel, she no shevet ben agali. He tin shova chave nushani. Behayam shakuesh, behayam shelochesh. Nishaye pole yamim acheri. This next song is one of the ones I was referring to when I said, what is too positive? I'm just gonna write the songs I love. This is called Prayer for Humanity. we 
learn what it means to really love ourselves that we can love our neighbors as we love ourselves that we can live in harmony see ourselves as a family this is my prayer for humanity that we protect our women and protect our girls that they feel safe in every corner of the world that we can live in harmony see ourselves as a family this is my prayer for humanity Every man will be a father to someone By loving every boy as if it were his son That we can live in harmony See ourselves as a family This is my prayer for humanity That every man, woman, boy and girl Will hear these words all across the world This is my prayer for humanity We can live in harmony, see ourselves as a family. This is my prayer for humanity. That we learn that no one really wins a war. And every leader knows what power is for. That we can live in harmony, see ourselves as a family. This is my prayer for humanity. But every man, woman, boy, and girl will hear these words all across the world. This is my prayer for humanity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. This last song we're gonna perform, this is called Gift of Acceptance. Some believe it's right to say Jesus when he pray. Some believe Muhammad, Allah, or Buddha are the way. God's up in the sky. I'll honor your choices and you can honor mine. Whether you are red, black, yellow, brown, or white, a man with a husband or a woman with a wife, we can debate till the end of time who's wrong and who is right. Or I can honor your choices and you can honor mine. We are one the same. Things from life. We want peace, love, and prosperity. But can we give up? I need to be right. Give the world the presence. Give the gift of your acceptance. Give the world a present, give the gift of your acceptance.
Some say he's a herb. Does God live here in our hearts or out in the universe? Gandhi was a Hindu, Martin Luther King, a Christian. Regardless of religion, they knew love was the mission. We are one. But can we give up a need to be right? Give the world a present, give the gift of your acceptance. Give the world a present, give the gift of your acceptance. They call you Israeli and they call me an American. I look at you and I don't see a country, I just see my friend. I pray we're in each other's lives for a long, long time. Cause I honor your choices and you honor mine. We are one. Present, give the gift of your acceptance. Give the world a present, give the gift of your acceptance. Thank you so much. Don Riker, Kareem Simmons on bass. Pina Boto on percussion, Blue Miller on guitar, Amitria Dock and Shantae Pan on vocals, and Frederick Yane guesting on harmonica. Thank you so much. <laughs>